everyone welcome to my channel nukma biology classes in this today's lecture our topic is theories of evolution this video is taken from chapter 7 part 4 of evolution series all the videos of my biology series taken from cbsc classes so in this video our first topic is theories of evolution before this we knew about the origin of life evolution and evidence of evolution so what is theories of evolution the fact that there has been evolution in the living world has been established by abundant evidences available from the various biological field the opinions however differ on the mechanism of evolution that is the way in which the existing species change into new ones from time to time a number of hypotheses have been put forward to explain the mechanism by which very large number of species of animals and plants emerged on the face of this earth however most of this lacked scientific explanations and hence were discarded in the following account four modern theories have been put forward to explain the mode of evolution or origin of life and these are first one that is the lamarck theory of inheritance of acquired characters or lamarckism second is darwin's theory of natural selection or darwinism third is de vries mutation theory and the last is modern concept of evolution so these four are the theories of evolution now our first theory of evolution is lamarck's theory of the inheritance of acquired characters so what is lamarck's theory This theory was put forward by a well-known French biologist, Cavalier de Lamarck, and he explained it in his famous book Philosophie Biologique in 1809. Lamarck was in charge of the invertebrate collection at the Natural History Museum in Paris. He, as a result of his systematic studies, became convinced that species were not fixed. but were rather derived from the pre-existing species by modification this idea was in conflict with the views prevailing at that time that is spatial creation and fixity of species therefore his theory was not received well he was ridiculed by george cuvier by saying you can get or lose any organ by merely wishing for it now what are the factors of the theory so lamarck's theory is based on three factors which is first one that is new nits second is acquisition of characters in which in a tendency use and disuse of organs and effect of environment and the third factor is inheritance of acquired characters so what are these factors so first one that is new need environment means the aggregate of external circumstances conditions and things which affect the existence and development of the organism living there variation in the environment of an organism creates a new need for adapting to the change else it will not survive the organism has to put in special efforts to fulfill its new need of adaptation these efforts lead to a change in the habits or behavior of the organism the new habits involve fresh or extensive use of certain organs or structures of the body and disuse of others now the second factor is acquisition of characters characters are acquired by the organism to meet the new needs in three ways the first one that is innate tendency evolution that is change in species occur by innate tendency towards greater and greater complexity which he equated with perfection as organism attained perfection they became better and better adapted to their environment thus lamarck believed that evolution responded to the organism need next is use and disuse of organs use and disuse of organs affect their form structure and mode of functioning 
Continuous extensive use of organs to cope with the environment keeps them active and makes them larger, stronger and more efficient. Continued under use or disuse of organs gradually makes them weaker and smaller so that they tend to finally disappear. Thus, by differential use and disuse of various body parts, during its lifetime, an organism would change to some extent and acquire some traits. Next is effect of environment. Environment affects all organisms. Variations in the environmental factors such as temperature, light, medium, food, pressure, humidity, wind, animals, etc., affect the living things and produce changes in their bodies. The changes brought about by use and disuse of organs and by the influence of environmental factors in an individual during its lifetime and this are called acquired characters. And the third factor is that is inheritance of acquired characters. The characters acquired by an individual through use and disuse of organs and through environmental influences as explained above are transmitted by heredity to the next generation. In very every generation fresh characters are acquired with the result after a number of generations the variations accumulate to the extent that the species is modified into a new one. Thus, according to the Lamarck, evolution is a slow or gradual process and it occurs by accumulation of changes over generations. Hence, the existing species are the sum total of characters acquired by their predecessors in many generations. So, these are all about the factors of the theory. Now, explanation of this theory. So, evolution of animals according to Lamarck's theory may be explained by setting a few examples for his own writings. So, here the first one that is giraffe. The giraffe is a mammal with very long neck and long forelimbs. It has evolved from a deer-like ancestor with a small neck. Here in this picture you can see that it is stretching and after the stretching reproduction causes a inheritance of acquired characters. So, these ancestors happened to live in a barren place where leaves of the trees were only food available to it. In making an effort to reach the leaves, it continuously stretched its neck and forelimbs. This resulted in slight elongation of these parts. The increase acquired in the one generation was transmitted to the next generation. So, in which further elongation occurred due to similar efforts and this process after a number of generations produced the present day giraffe which is a long neck and a long forelimbs. Other prominent example to support the ever Arguments are like a blacksmith acquires large biceps muscles due to daily using them for the welding heavy hammer or rabbit spinner has well developed muscles as it is frequently moved for receiving sound waves from various directions. Now next is aquatic birds. Here in this picture you can see the aquatic birds like ducks and swan are considered to have arisen from the terrestrial ancestors. The latter had to go into water for food protection etc. So they spread their toes widely and stretch the skin at their bases in order to rest on water. And this gradually developed the webs between the toes. After this, the next example is snakes. The ancestors of the snakes were lizard-like reptiles with two pair of fully developed limbs. These ancestors out of fear of the mammals which were larger and more powerful started living in the narrow surfaces or holes and in thick vegetation. In this effort, they stretched their body to accommodate it in a narrow space and did not use the limbs. 
Continuous stretching of the body make it longer and cylindrical, while permanent disuse of the limbs caused their disappearance. Cave animals have lost their eyes due to disuse and dark environment they live in. And the last is deer. The deer is thought to have developed its present speed through continuous effort of running to which it resorted for protecting itself from its enemies. So, these are the examples which explains the theory of Lamarckism. After this, what are the criticism of the theory? So, evidence against the inheritance of acquired characters. First, criticism. And second is evidence for the inheritance of acquired characters. So, First, you will have to see that Lamarck's theory was very successful and did not and did match to spread the idea of evolution. But ultimately, it proved faulty. It can't be accepted fully. Its first two factors are correct, which is new needs are created by the change in the environment and new characters are acquired by use and disuse of organs and environmental factors. And the third factor that is inheritance of acquired characters is however disputable there is evidence both against as well as in favor of the inheritance of acquired characters. So according to evidence against the inheritance of acquired correct characters a German biologist August Wieswan offered the greatest op opposition to the inheritance of acquired characters. He put forward his theory of continuity of germplasm in 1892. According to this theory, each animal consists of two types of cells. First one is germ cells and second is somatic cells. Germ cells which contain determinants of all the hereditary characters in their nuclei and the somatic cells which harbor in their nuclei only the characters of a particular organ. The environment and use and disuse of organs affect the somatic cells only. They have no influence on the germ cells. This means that the acquired characters reside only in the somatic cells. The variations in the somatic cells have no effect on the germ cells. The somatic cells are mortal and perish with the death of the animal. Thus, the acquired characters vanish when the individual bearing them die. The germ cells are immortal and are passed on intact from generation to generation. It therefore follows that the acquired characters are not inherited because they are produced by environment and not by genes. And the next is evidence for the inheritance of acquired characters. There are some evidences in which the first one is formation of germ cells and somatic cells. In certain cases, the somatic cells produce the germ cells, which is against Wiesmann's theory. This occurs in vegetative propagation in plants and regeneration in animals. A purely somatic system cutting or leaf sprouts into a new plant which bears flowers having germ cells. A part without reproductive organs cut off from the body of an earthworm grows into the complete individual which develops the reproductive organs or germ cells. The latter have obviously been formed from the somatic cells. Next is effect of environment on germ cells through somatic cells. Heslop Harrison found a melanic variety of moth in localities where the food plants were infected with manganese salts from the industrial smoke. He fed the pale variety of this moth on food coated with a manganese salt for several generations. This ultimately produced melanic moths and these melanic moths breed true that is gave a melanic progeny. Next is effect of environment directly on the germ cells. Tower exposed some potato beetles to abnormal conditions of temperature and humidity at the time of the development of their reproductive organs. This did not produce any change in the beetles themselves. Their offspring, however, exhibited color variations which were passed on to the succeeding generations. And the last is effect of radiations and chemicals. 
X-rays and certain chemicals such as colchicine cause chromosomal changes and thereby produce inheritable vari variations. Morgan exposed fruit flies to X-rays and got from them offspring with remarkable changes, which were passed on to the next generation. Miss C. R. Back in collaboration with the J.M. Robson and J.G. Carr, produced chromosomal mutations by exposing Drosophila melanogaster to mustard gas vapor. So, these are the criticism of the theory. So, here you can see the basic idea of Lamarckism. So, at first internal org, then the environmental changes occur, then the new needs appear. In case of new needs, some organs, that means disuse of organs and some has use of organs. If disuse of organs, then a structure disappear and if use of organs, then a structure develop better. After this, inheritance of acquired characters and then the origin of a new species occur. So, this is the basic idea of Lamarckism. And there are some significance of Lamarckism in which the first one that is it was first comprehensive theory of biological evolution. Second is it nicely explains the existence of vestigial organs in animals due to their continuous disuse. Third is it explains the development of a strong jaw, muscles and claws in the carnivores due to their continued extra use. And the last is, it stimulated other biologists to look for the mechanism of organic mechanism. So, these are the significance of Lamarckism. After this, now here you can see the Neo-Lamarckism. What is Neo-Lamarckism? The evidence for the inheritance of acquired characters revived the otherwise discarded Lamarckism. The revival of Lamarckism in a modified form is called Neo-Lamarckism. After this, now what are the postulates of the Neo-Lamarckism? So, Neo-Lamarckism states that the germ cells are not always immune from the effects of environment. Next is, germ cells may be affected directly by environment without any effect on the somatic cells. Then, germ cells may carry acquired or somatic variations to the offspring. So, it follows that the organism is a whole and no doubt it is made up of many organs. One organ may affect the structure and working of another organ. Now, the question is, what is environment gene interaction? It is now held that somatic traits are the result of interactions between genes and environment. Thus, there is so no such things as the acquired characters visualized by Lamarck. Environment does affect the gene expression. So, these are the postulates of the Neo-Lamarckism. Now, what are the conclusions? So, if we talk about the conclusion, taking all the foregoing cases into consideration, it may be said that there is more evidence against than in favor of Lamarckism. Lamarckism consequently does not provide a satisfactory mechanism for the evolution. However, Lamarck's contribution is here. First, that is, popularized the concept of evolution and the second is made biologists look for the mechanism of organic evolution. So his theory is significant in holding that evolution best explains the current diversity of life and in its emphasis on adaptations to the environment as a primary product of evolution. Lamarck satisfactory explains the existence of vestigial organs in case of animals. Now here you can see the differences between the Lamarckism and Neo-Lamarckism. So what are the main differences between them? Lamarckism is original theory of Lamarck while Neo-Lamarckism is a modification of the original theory of Lamarck in order to make it more suitable to modern knowledge. 
सेकेंड इज द थियोरी लेज स्ट्रेस ऑन इंटरनल फोर्स एपिटेंसी एंड यूज एंड डिस यूज ऑफ ऑर्गन इन केस ऑफ लैमार्क वाइल इन केस ऑफ न्यू लैमार्किज्म इट डज नॉट गिव एनी इंपॉर्टेंस टू दीज फैक्टर्स लैमार्किज्म बिलीव दैट चेंजेस इन इन्वॉर्मेंट ब्रिंग अबाउट ए कॉन्सियस रिएक्शन इन एनिमल्स वाइल द न्यू लैमार्किज्म हियर द थ्योरी स्ट्रेसेज ऑन द डायरेक्ट इफेक्ट ऑफ चेंज इन्वॉर्मेंट ऑन द ऑर्गेनिज्म एंड द लास्ट इज इन लैमार्किज्म अकॉर्डिंग टू लैमार्किज्म द एक्वायर्ड कैरेक्टर्स पासिज ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन वाइल इन न्यू लैमार्किज्म नॉर्मली ओनली दोज मॉडिफिकेशन आर ट्रांसफर्ड टू द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन विच इन्फ्लुएंस जर्म सेल्स और वेयर सोमैटिक सेल्स गिव राइज टू जर्म सेल्स so these are the main differences between the lamarckism and neo lamarckism now after this the second theory of evolution is darwin's theory of natural selection so what is darwin's theory of natural selection the theory of natural selection was announced on july 1st 1858 by the famous english naturalist charles robert darwin and an english biologist alfred russel wallace in the historic meeting of the linnean society of london both have arrived at the theory independently as a result of very similar experiences both were influenced by reading the works of british geologist sir charles lill and the english political economist thomas malthus so these workers organized that competition between species lead to struggle for existence and this provided necessary information to formulate the theory of evolution Darwin traveled round the world on the ship HMS Beagle. It is very important to know that the name of the ship is HMS Beagle. With a surveying expedition for 5 years from 1831 to 1836. During his journey, he made extensive observations of animals and plants. he noted a huge variety and remarkable similarity among organisms and their wonderful adaptations to the environment he became convinced that theory of special creation and the idea of fixity of species were incorrect this made him an evolutionist now here you can see the galapagos island which is in enlarged view where the hms beagle move with the darwin so you can see the area valles was also a widely traveled person he was a naturalist from dutch east indies working on malay archipelago now indonesia He studied flora and fauna of South America and Southeast Asia. He also got evolutionary idea and expressed it in his essay on the tendency of varieties to depart indefinitely from the original types. Most biologists call the theory of natural selection the Darwin-Wallis theory. But since Darwin's thesis was much better documented, the theory is often known as Darwinism. It was later explained by Darwin in his monumental book on the origin of species by means of natural selection in November 1859 then Darwin died on April 19 1882 Publications of Darwin's book raised controversy the concept of evolution was opposed primarily on ethical and religious ground however Darwin's logic finally convinced the people so this is the history of the darwin's theory now what are the factors of the darwin's theory so according to the darwin's theory there are many factors first one is the rapid multiplication then limited environmental resources such as foods and space then struggle for existence then variation then natural selection or survival of the fittest then inheritance of useful variations and the last is formation of new species so 
what are the factors here the first factor which is the rapid multiplication so according to the rapid multiplication the ability to reproduce is basic to all living organism and is a fundamental drive which ensures continuations of the species like paramecium divides 3 times in 48 hours the cod fish may produce over a million of eggs in a year if all the eggs develop into fishes the whole atlantic ocean will be full of cods in 5 years an oyster may leg many eggs billions of eggs at a single spawning the elephant is a slow breeder it lives up to 90 years it starts breeding at the age of 30 years during its lifetime it produces only 6 of spring yet if all the young ones survive a single pair would produce many elephants in 750 years and in case of plants produce thousands of seeds each year so in spite of the enormous reproductive potential of organism under natural conditions the number of individual of each species remains nearly constant over long period of time and this is because the great majority of potential of spring die next is limited environmental resources that means space and food increase of the populations in animals and plants requires more space and food the space in the universe remains constant the ultimate source of food for all the plants and also animals consists of carbon dioxide of the air and water and mineral salts of the soil these materials do not increase this fact is proved by the biogeo cycles of these materials in nature the carrying capacity of environment that is the number of individuals it can support does not allow its population to grow beyond the limit and an equilibrium is reached the population fluctuates around the equilibrium hence the population size remains nearly constant next is struggle for existence because of excessive multiplication by the parents and limited space and food supply there starts a severe competition among the offsprings for their requirements every individual make efforts for fulfillment of its basic need namely suitable space to live food to eat mate to reproduce and protection from enemies this competition for the primary necessities of life is called struggle for existence so for the struggle for existence is threefold for every individual in which the first one is intra specific struggle what is intra specific struggle this is the struggle between the individuals of the same species this is the keenest form of struggle as the needs of the individuals of the same species are identical this struggle may be exemplified by the efforts of two dogs for a piece of meat war is an intra specific struggle in humans cannibalism is also a form of intra specific struggle next is inter specific struggle which is the struggle between the individuals of different species this struggle is illustrated by the efforts of a snake for catching a rat and of the rat for escape and the last struggle for existence is environmental struggle and this is a struggle of the animals with the changes in the environment factors such as heat cold drought flood storm famine light etc now the next is variations variation is a law of nature every individual varies in some respect such as size shape structure and behavior from others of its species even the offspring of the same parents are never exactly alike except the identical twins in fact in each population some variability always exists for almost every trait now the natural selection which is the main that is survival of the fittest in the struggle for existence the individual which have more favorable variations will enjoy a competitive advantage over others which have less favorable or unfavorable variations and will survive and reproduce for instance during a severe drought the plants which can maximize absorption of water and can minimize its loss have a greater chance of survival than the others 
so the key factor in determining survival is adaptations to the environment any variation however slight be it physical physiological or behavioral which gives one individual an advantage over another individual will act as a selective advantage in the struggle for existence individual selection with favorable and unfavorable variations if unfavorable variations have a selective disadvantage and are rejected by nature in this way natural selection leads to increased vigor within the species the competition is so severe that only a few individuals survive out of millions this shorting out of the individuals with useful variations has been called natural selection by darwin and survival of the fittest by the english social philosopher hubbert spencer natural selection keeps an efficient check on the populations of organism now the inheritance of useful variations the individuals after their selection by nature in their struggle for existence pass on their useful variations to the next generation and last is the formation of new species in each generation new favorable varieties appear and supplement the favorable variations inherited from the parents so these are the main factors of the theory of darwinism now after this criticism of the theory so what are the criticism darwin's theory of natural selection in today's recognized as the main factor in the evolution of organism it however has evidence both for and against it in which the first one that is the evidence for the theory most of the factors in darwin's theory namely excessive multiplication limited food and space struggle for existence abundance of variations and natural selection do operate in the nature and can be observed darwin's theory is further supported by a few very important phenomena in which the first one is artificial selection a close parallelism exists between the natural selection and artificial selection man in breeding experiment on useful animals select individuals with desired traits and separate them from those which do not possess such characters the selected ones are permitted to the mate among themselves after repeating this process for a few generation a new breed of the animal is formed in this way man has been able to produce several varieties of domestic animals such as dogs horses pigeons poultry cows goats sheep pigs etc and many cultivated crops fruits and ornamental plants from their wild ancestors darwin himself produced several varieties of pigeons by artificial selection if man can produce new varieties or breeds in a short period nature with its vast resources and very long time at its disposal can easily produce a new species by selection so here you can see by a wild mustard cabbage form then kale kohlrabi cauliflower and broccoli so it shows the artificial selection now the next is mimicry and protective coloration the remarkable cases of mimicry and protective coloration found in certain animals are products of natural selection they could reach their present stage of perfection only by gradual change occurring side by side in both the models and the predators next is correlation between the nectaries of the flowers and proboscis of insects position of nectaries in flowers is wonderfully related to the length of the proboscis of the insect that pollinate them after this the evidence against the theory so here the evidence for the theory are the artificial selection mimicry and protective coloration and the correlation between the nectaries of the flowers and the proboscis of insects now if we talk about the evidence against the theory first is inheritance of small variations darwin held that small variations from the raw materials for the evolution this means that organ appear as small structures and gradually become perfect after several generations next is 
perpetuations of the vestigial organs according to the theory of natural selection only the useful organs are selected in the struggle for existence the vestigial organs serves no function yet they are being preserved generation after generation next is over specialization of organs in certain animals some organs have developed beyond the stage of usefulness example antlers of deer tusks of elephants etc these organs instead of providing useful to their pro processor after hindrance in their daily life there is no room for their selection in darwin's theory then lack of reasons that produce variations darwin's theory simply states that the nature selects the individual with useful variations but what causes the variation is not explained by it the factors that brings about variations are obviously the primary causes of evolution and must be included in the theory next is distinct between continuous and discontinuous variations darwin's held that any variation which is favorable to the organism could be inherited this is not true in view of the present knowledge of genetics now the last is disapproval of the darwin's theory of inheritance darwin's put forward his theory of inheritance entitled theory of pangenesis in 1868 and it was disapproved by the theory of germ plasm advanced by august wisman in 1892 so these are the evidence against the theory now here the principle of natural selection the theory of natural selection may be summarized as five observations and three inferences derived from them and here the mean is ernst meyer in 1982 so here you can see the observations and the interference in observation the first is rapid multiplication stability of populations and limited food and space for this the interference is struggle for existence next is struggle for existence and variation so interference is natural selection or survival of the fittest and the last is natural selection and inheritance of useful variations over many generations and here the interference is formation of new species so natural selection therefore is differential success in reproduction and its product is adaptation of organism to their environment it occurs through interactions between the environment and the variability in the population thus natural selection is merely a restrictive and directive factor rather than a creative one and it explains the survival of the fittest but not the arrival of the fittest so this is the principle of the natural selection now after this the third theory of evolution is devries mutation theory what is devries mutation theory The mutation theory was put forward in 1901 by a Dutch botanist Hugo de Vries. It states that new species arises from the pre-existing ones in a single generation by a sudden appearance of marked discontinuous inheritable genetic variations which are called mutations. According to him evolution is a discontinuous and jerky process rather than a continuous and gradual ones as held by Lamarck and Darwin. so in other words there is a jump from one species to another he called it saltation that is single step large mutation so here you can see who was hugo de vries he was a dutch botanist and one of the first geneticist he is known mainly for the suggesting the concept of genes discovering the laws of heredity in the 1890s while unaware of Gregor Mendel's work introducing the term mutation and developing a mutation theory of evolution. De Vries regarded mutations as the raw material for evolution. Natural selection works on mutations, preserves the mutants having useful mutations and eliminates the mutants with harmful mutations. The mutants having useless mutations may coexist with the parent species. now here you can see that de vries experiment so what are the de vries experiment 
Dear Rice was led to formulate his theory from the observations of his experiments on a plant called evening primrose that is Oenothera lamarckiana which grew wild near his garden. He observed that among the numerous normal plants of the evening primrose having a small variations there were a few with wide departures from the normal type. He took a normal plant and raised its seeds by self-pollination. On growing these seeds, he found that the majority of the plants were normal like their parent and showed only minor variations. A few were, however, quite different from the parent in many characters. They, different plant, were found to breed through their own characteristics. They gave rise to a few still more different plants in each generation as uh, did their parents. The markedly different plants showed variations in the size of the flower, shape of the leaves, color of the stem, size, form and arrangement of the buds, size of seeds and growing habits. From this, Dave Rice held that the new types were appearing in evening primrose and that he was actually seeing evolution going on. He called the marked differences mutations and the plants bearing the, them is called mutants. He found that the mutations appeared suddenly and were inherited by the offsprings. So, the theory of mutation of Hugo debris are mutations or discontinuous variations are the raw material of evolution. Mutations appear all of a sudden. They become operational immediately. Unlike Darwin's continuous variations or fluctuations, mutations do not revolve around the mean or normal character of the species. The same type of mutations can appear in a number of individuals of a species. All mutations are inheritable. Mutations appear in all conceivable directions. Useful mutations are selected by nature. Little mutations are eliminated. However, useless and less harmful ones can persist in the progeny. Accumulation of variations produce new species. Sometimes a new species is produced from a single mutation. Evolution is a jerky and discontinuous process. So these are the theories of mutation by Hugo de Vries. Now, here you can see that according to Hugo de Vries experiment, here, D. Rice noted four types of plants in which the first was is progressive, which had some new traits. Second is retrogressive, that had certain traits reduced or lost. Third is degressive, which were weak and had low survival. And the last is inconstant, that resembled parents and at times produced variants. So these are the four types of plants which were noted by De Vries. After this, now some notable features of the mutations theory. So here you can see mutations form the raw material for evolution. Mutations appear suddenly and produce their effect immediately. Mutants are markedly different from the parents and there are no immediate stages between the two. Same mutations can appear in several individuals of a species. Mutations are recurring. Mutations can appear in all directions. All mutations have a genetic basis and are therefore inheritable. A single mutation may produce a new species. Nature selects beneficial mutations and eliminates lethal mutations. And the last is... Evolution is a discontinuous or jerky process. So, these are the notable features of the mutation theory. Now, what are the criticism of the theory? So, like other theories of evolution, mutation theory also has points both in favor of and against it. Here, the first, that is evidence for the theory and the following fact supports the mutation theory. First one, that is, D. Vry's experiment has been repeated by McDougall and Shell in America and by Gates in England and his observations have largely been confirmed. 
म्यूटेशन डू अकर इन नेचर इन द वे हेल्ड बाय डी वाइज एंड एग्जाम्पल्स लाइक द एनकॉन्स शीप अ शॉर्ट लेग्ड वेराइटी ऑफ द सेप वॉज प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय एन ऑर्डिनरी सीप इन द सिंगल जनरेशन इन एटीन This mutation was beneficial to the farmers as this sheep could not jump over the low stone fences. Next is here Oenothera lamarckiana has 14 chromosomes. All the mutants produced from it have 16, 20, 22, 24, 28 28 and 30 chromosomes. This shows that the mutants are independent species. So mutations have a genetic basis and are therefore inheritable a single large mutation may produce a new variety or even a new species in plants like delicious apple that is caesar gigas so these are the evidences for the theory now the evidences against the theory so there are few shortcomings in the mutation theory in which the first one that is the mutations are of rare occurrence so it therefore seems doubtful in all the multitude of animals and plant species could appear by mutations mutations are often recessive whereas it is generally the dominant mutation that bring about evolution and the last evidence against the theory is the cases of imaging resemblance of the mimics with their models harmonization of animal colors with their surroundings and relationship between the position of nectaries in flowers and the length of proboscis in their insect pollinators cannot be imagined to have developed all of a sudden by mutations in different organism so these are the criticism now the question is what are the significance of de vries theory the great importance of the de vries contribution lay in direct attention to the mutation it was readily accepted as the mutations were found to be inheritable it was later thought that evolution cannot occur by the mutations alone natural selection and isolation of mutations were also necessary for the evolution to take place so these are the significance of the mutation theory now the fourth and the last evolution theory is present or modern concept of evolution so what are the present or modern concept of evolution the present concept of evolution is a modification and elaboration of the darwin's theory of natural selection and is often called neo darwinism modification was necessitated by the findings that only the genetic variations are inherited and not all variations are held by darwin so the modern concept of evolution is thus a synthesis of darwin's and de vries theory the synthetic theory was explained by g l stebbin in his book process of organic evolution so this is the present or modern concept of evolution according to this the modern theory of evolution combines the following idea first that is the darwin theory of the origin of species by the natural selection next is mendel understanding of genetics and the third is wismann's theory of the chromosomal basis of heredity so these are the modern theory of evolution is a combination of all three idea that is darwin's idea mendel's idea and wismann's idea now the question is what are the factors of the modern concept of evolution so there are many factors of the modern concept of evolution in which the first one that is genetic variations in populations in which migration non random mating genetic drift mutation gene recombination hybridization second is natural selection then speciation and last last is reproductive isolation so these are the factors which we will explain in details in the next slide so here you can see in the picture that is first genetic variations in population the term population refers to all the individuals of a species inhabiting the same area at a particular time 
So, according to genetic variations, there are some changes in the gene frequencies by many ways, in which the first way is migration. Migration of a few frogs having darker or lighter color from one pond to the another changes the gene pool of both the ponds. Breeding of immigrants with the host population adds new alleles to the gene pool of the host population. This addition of alleles is called gene migration. An addition or removal of alleles when individuals join or leave a population from another locality causes gene flow. Next is non-random mating. The selection of more brightly colored male bird by a female bird may increase the gene frequency of bright color in the next generation. So this is non-random mating. After this, genetic drift. The term genetic drift refers to the chance elimination of the genes of certain traits when a section of population migrates or dies of natural calamity. It dramatically alters the gene frequency of the remaining population. It eliminates certain alleles and fixes the other alleles, thereby reducing the genetic variability to the population. So, for the genetic drift, here some explanations. So, first one that is founder's effect. So, what are the factors that guide biological evolution? The so first one is founder effect. Here, the deviations among founders are statistically significant. So, according to founder's effect, it is an instance of genetic drift in human population and it is noted when a small group of people called founders leave their homes to find a new settlement. This population in a new settlement may have different genotype frequencies from that of the parent population. So the formation of a different genotype in a new settlement is called founder's effect. Next is the bottleneck effect. Natural calamity, say earthquake, fire or flood may greatly reduce the size of a population killing the individuals randomly. The genetic pool of the small surviving population is often not a representative of the genetic pool of the original population. This situation with reduced genetic variability is called bottleneck. Among the survivors, certain alleles may be over-preserved. Here, some may be under-preserved and some alleles may be totally eliminated. So, according to bottleneck effect, surviving populations emerging from bottleneck has many alleles of one type. Only a few of the second type and none of the third type. Clearly, its genetic makeup is not a representative of that of the large original population. Now, here the mutation which is also a factor of modern concept of evolution. Mutation is the major source of genetic variations. It alters the base sequence in a gene or gene sequence in a chromosome. So, first one is the gene mutations. Gene mutation is a random change in the base sequence of a gene. Here you can see the chromosome abnormally can be numerical structural. In case of numerical, aneuploidy and polyploidy. In case of structural, translocation, inversion, deletion, insertion, rings or isochromosomes. Now, next is chromosomal aberrations. Morphology and number of chromosomes Change at time and such a variations may manifest in the phenotype. So, the morphological changes occur by deletion, inversion, translocation and duplication of a segment of a chromosome. Numerical changes takes place by aneuploidy that is addition or deletion of one or two individual chromosomes or by polyploidy that is addition of one or more complete sets of chromosomes. Now, next is gene recombination. Genetic variations also varies by crossing over of the chromosomes, independent assortment of chromosomes during meiosis and random coming together of the maternal and paternal chromosomes at fertilization. These events recombine existing traits rather than introducing new ones. However, they do produce new phenotypes. Next is hybridization. 
It is a method of mixing the genes of the two population. It can occur by migration of a section of a population to a new place or by crossbreeding by man. So it changes the gene frequency and alters the phenotypes of the offspring. After this, the main and important factor here of the modern concept of evolution is natural selection. Natural selection is not a bloody battle as emphasized by Darwin and Wallace. It is rather a peaceful process that has little to do with the struggle for existence or elimination of the unfit or survival of the fittest. So, the natural selection really means differential reproduction that is some members of a population have traits which enables them to grow up and reproduce at a higher rate and leave more surviving offsprings in the next generation than others. <coughs> Those that produce <coughs> more viable offspring genes to the contribute a proportionately greater percentage of the genes to the gene pool of the next generation than those that produce fewer offsprings. If differential reproduction continues for many generations, genes of the individuals which produce more offsprings will become predominant in the gene pool of the population. This leads to a change in the gene frequency of the population. So in this picture you can see the differential reproduction or natural selection. Suppose that a genetic variations appear in one individual of the parent generation and the variant individuals leaves three offsprings. Each non-dominant individual leaves only one new offspring. So the variant individuals will form a progressively large part of the population. Such a spreading of variations by different reproduction is called natural selection. So, the best adopted individual contribute maximum to gene pool. Which individual produce more surviving offspring than others? Generally, those individuals which are best adopted to the environment, that is, which have adoptive mutations, have greater number of surviving young ones. The well-adopted individuals on the whole are healthier, can find food and mate readily and can better look for their offspring. Thus, the well-adopted individuals contribute most to the gene pool. Now, if we talk about as an example of the evolution caused by the natural selection, we may consider the hair in case of animals. Length and density of the hair is largely determined by genes. A very cold winter may kill many individuals with short spares hair. Individuals having longer, denser fur are more likely to survive the winter and reproduce in the following spring. Because the animals with longer, denser fur breed and pass on their genotype, which codes for the growth of long, dense fur, a larger population of the individuals in the next generation of the population will have genes for long, dense fur. So the genetic makeup of the population has changed from one generation to the next and this is called evolution. And now, how many types of natural selection? So if we talk about the types of natural selection, there are three main types. First one is stabilizing selection, then directional selection and the last is disruptive selection. Let us take size as the variable trait through many other traits would serve just as well if number of factors contribute to the size then the actual distribution of size in the population should approximate bell shaped curve. If we talk about the stabilizing selection, so according to this, in stabilizing selection, the average phenotype is the most adoptable and selection favors it over extreme phenotypes in their direction. In human populations, individuals have range of heights. However, majority of them are more likely to be of average height than very tall or very short. Similarly, weight of newly born human babies ranges from 2 pounds to 10.8 pounds. The statistical evidences suggest that baby weighing 
between 7 to 8 pounds have a better chance of survival than those at the extreme in either direction. Comparison of Latimeria, the living fossil and their fossils have shown that the this fish has changed very little thus exhibiting stabilizing selection. Next is directional selection. This type of selection occurs when an extreme phenotype is favored and the distribution curve shifted in that direction. In other words, some phenotype within the population are better adopted to some environmental changes and hence are more likely to survive and reproduce successfully than other phenotypes. Like examples, industrial millennialism are phenomena depicted by paper moth or evolution of the modern horse equals or pesticide resistance in case of mosquitoes. Now the last type of natural selection is disruptive selection it is just the opposite of stabilizing selection that is the extreme have more adoptable phenotypes than the average ones so consequently the original population is disrupted into two or more separate groups that later evolve into new species if disruptive selection results in many new species then it is termed as adoptive radiation and this kind of selection is rare so, a black belt seed cracker revealed disruptive selection. Some birds have small bills and some have large bills to feed on seeds of sages, a Mars plant. The young birds will bills different from these two extreme sizes do not survive because their bills do not help them to feed on any other available food sources. So these are all about the selections here you can see the stabilizing selection directional selection and diversifying selection in case of stabilizing selection robins typically lay four eggs an example of stabilizing selection larger clutches may result in malnourished chicks while smaller clutches may result in no viable offspring. in case of directional selection Light colored peepered moth are better camouflaged against a pristine environment. Likewise, dark colored peepered moth are better camouflaged against a shooty environment. Thus, as the industrial revolution progressed in 19th century England, the color of the moth population shifted from light to dark, an example of directional selection. And the last is diversifying selection. In a hypothetical population, gray and Himalayan rabbits are better able to blend with a rocky environment than white rabbits resulting in diversifying selection so these are all about the types of natural selection now the question is what is speciation which is also a factor of modern concept of evolution when environmental conditions change or a section of the population migrates to the new area with different environmental conditions new species may arise origin of new species from the existing one is called speciation which we will discuss in the next video in detail so in the changed environment population may become adopted or die out so a population become adopted if its individual have some new traits which suits for a changed environment and is selected by the nature on this basis. So the new traits is traits by differential reproduction and it at times becomes a stranded features of a section of the population. This is the unit of evolutionary change. Accumulation of many such unit changes in a section of a population may sufficiently alter the individuals in structure or function to become a new species. So this is called speciation that is original population then initial steps of speciation process then evolution of reproductive isolation then new distinct species after equilibration. So this is all about the speciation. Now what are the reproductive isolation speciation is not likely to occur simply by changes in the genotype of the population the population with different genotypes appearing in them must be isolated so that differences may accumulate to the label of speciation else interbreeding of emerging population with result in 
mixing of their genotypes and disappearance of differences between them isolation preserves the integrity of a species by checking hybridization so about the reproductive isolation we will also discuss in the next video according to the isolating mechanism here there are three types of isolation first one is the temporal isolation then we have oral isolation and then geographical isolation and uh, by adding all three is you can see the reproductive isolation so by isolating mechanism reproductive isolation occur now here the summary before this the what are the differences between the darwinism and the neo darwinism Darwinism is the original theory given by the Charles Darwin to explain the origin of new species while the new Darwin is a modification of the original theory of Darwin to remove its shortcomings according to darwinism accumulation of continuous variations causes changes in the individuals to form new species while in case of new darwinism instead of continuous variations mutations are believed to help from new species According to Darwinism it believes in the selection of individuals on the basis of accumulation of variations while in neo darwinism variations accumulate in the gene pool and not in the individuals in darwinism does not believe in isolation in neo darwinism incorporates isolation as an essential component of evolution in case of darwinism it can explain the origin of new characters while neo darwinism the theory can explains the occurrence of unchanged forms over millions of years in case of darwinism darwinism cannot explain the persistence of certain forms in the unchanged condition while in case of neo darwinism normally only those modifications are transferred to the next generation which influence germ cells or where somatic cells give rise to germ cells so these are the main differences between the darwinism and neo darwinism now the last topic that is the summary of the present concept of evolution to sum up evolution operates through the basic four step mechanism in which the first one is appearance of genetic variations in certain individuals of a population by migration non random mating genetic drift chromosomal changes gene mutations recombination of genes and hybridization second is spreading of genetic variations in a subgroup of a population by natural selection through differential reproduction in successive generations some sort of isolation of a subgroup of population having the genotype selected by nature from other subgroups and the last is accumulation of genetic variations to sufficiently alter the individuals of the subgroup to become a new species so this is the end of video in which we discussed about the theories of evolution like lamarck theory darwin theory de vries mutation theory and modern concept of evolution after this the next upcoming video will be on the reproductive isolation speciation and hardy weinberg equilibrium law so if you understand this video please like and share it and subscribe to my channel anupma biology classes if you have any questions any queries or any suggestions you can ask in the comment section below thank you for the watching